YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here, and today we are putting the fog lights on the 2010 Crown Vic P7B. Now I opted for these 7 inch fog lights, I'll post a link in the description. They look like they will probably provide the best lighting for economical price. You see it's a real simple installation, you have a small bolt that runs through there with a tiny nut. And then the bracket mounts to the vehicle with this bolt. And of course the nice thing about the way they designed the Crown Vic is there's lots of places where you can install this. So this will be a real simple installation. I'm going to drill a hole in the metal about this size on both sides in the front. Drop that mounting bracket in there. Bolt this in. Put some Loctite on it so that it doesn't come loose. And then put the light fixture in there. Put that bolt back through it. And tighten it down. So the fixture is going to be mounted in there, hanging down. And then this light will come in and mount like that. That's all the pieces you need. For wiring, I'm going to solder a black and a red wire that's approximate length of the gap between the two lights solder these together and then on the one from the passenger side solder wires that will run to basically underneath the glove box area where all the power wires are and if you've been watching my channel you know I've already pre-wired in the switch and we'll just add a relay to click these on and off. I do have a video if you are interested in having where your fog lights and you have grill lights that automatically click on when you turn on the high beams. I'll uh, post a link to that video as well. But uh, basically, you can do it either way. For this car, I'm probably just going to have the fog lights, at least for now. And this is what I was talking about with the Crown Vic. You have metal right there, so you can mount stuff to it pretty easily. And then you have these gaps that you can put your lights in. So, like, this light is going to go in that gap because it's too big for that gap. So you could put it in that slot or that slot. So I'm going to put one there, get your license plate, and then the other one there. So with any job like this, it's a really good idea to go ahead and prepare in advance. What I mean is figure out what wires need to be soldered, how long they need to be, whether you can solder them all together on your workbench or whether you need to do it at the job site. So for here, I can actually solder these wires together at the workbench, which makes it a lot easier and I will also put the wire that's going to go from here out to the power source again off the car and then what I'll have to do is just fish so it'll, it'll be a wire like this I'll just fish that to the power source and then I'll have to solder that one on the vehicle there's no way around that but at least these can all be done so it's about 21 inches between the two mounting points so that's what I'm going to do so basically I will solder these together and then this one with the additional wire that's going to go out to the power source and uh, you want to put your heat shrink tubes on before you get started because you can't do it after the fact.
you see I marked the center point and it's an inch and a half back from the bumper cover that should mount the light I measured it with the mounting bracket to where it'll be pretty much flush with the bumper cover same thing on this side here so I'm going to drill a pilot hole right in the middle there and then come back and drill the correct size hole and uh, you can put your hand up and feel behind there there's clearance there on both sides so these are ideal mounting points now because access up here is not real easy sometimes you can remove these bolts they are eight millimeter bolts and that gives you more room to pull this out of the way so that you can get your drill going straight up into there because obviously drilling at an angle is nearly impossible the other tip is since this is a really hard metal you really need a cobalt bit all the other bits are gonna wear out and take forever to go through there so just take your time don't let the drill bit walk all over the place and uh, eventually you'll get through it one way or another take the bracket push that through the hole and then lock washer and nut the nut is 13 millimeter it might be half inch they're so close it's hard to tell sometimes and the bolt appears to be uh, 9 16 it looks like it's supposed to sit in there so that it won't turn uh, your results may vary of course <laughs> Once you get it finger tight, then you can make your final adjustments. You can move the bracket a little bit and you can turn it. So you want to get it basically as close to the center as possible and then also angled so that the light's going to shine straight out. And after you get it where you want it, then go ahead and do your final tightening on it and put some Loctite or some RTV on the thread so that it won't loosen itself. And then lay them out so that you put the right one in the right spot and that all your wires are ready to go. You see how I've got mine wired. Obviously you can wire it differently than this. This is just what I'm doing for this particular project. So we've got the driver's side, 21 inches of wire, passenger side, and then enough wire to go all the way to the glove box. Uh, so I'm not going to need all of this extra wire, but... Like I always say, you can cut the wire that you have extra, but if you don't have enough, it's a pain sometimes to solder in more, particularly if it's in the firewall somewhere that you're needing to do your soldering. So this is the prep, and now we'll hang the lights and then do the electrical, and we'll be done. The mounting bolt is a 5 16 on each end. So you can see from the back side here, there's where it is, and I just need to aim it and tighten it down, and then repeat for the other side. And that's what the bracket looks like before you put the light on it. And then just tuck away the wires. There's lots of logical places to zip tie them and so forth, and then just start fishing them. Typically, we're going to run along here and go back through the firewall where all the other wires go through. And you do want to run them in conduit like this if you can. And guess where my conduit is at the shop? Guess where I am at today? Home. And I ran the ground to the factory ground location right there. It's usually wise to use the factory ground locations because you may not get a very good ground if you just try to self tap it into there and I didn't want to mess with the battery ground itself because that obviously needs to be well connected 
So now it's just run the hot wire. And guess where my fish sticks are? If you guessed at the shop, you would be correct. So I had to use a coat hanger there. Poked it through there, taped it to the wire, and I will pull it through to the passenger cabin. The nice thing is it will be through the factory boot at that point. Just make sure before you start pulling it through that it's not caught on anything or wrapped around anything that you don't want it to be. So when this is done, this wire is going to actually run down here and kind of in the factory locations minus the uh, and then this one will just obviously be an on off switch for the fog lights again it'll trigger a relay relays will be located over there and when triggered the relay will send power to the device basically it's just going to sit on top like this and kind of float a little bit um, you know if you don't mind drilling holes in this piece then obviously you can mount it I just don't want to drill any holes since this one has actually got no holes in it every other Crown Vic I've had these things have had holes in them so I've just used the existing holes but uh, like I said I, I don't want to add holes to this in case somebody doesn't like this setup later on they can just pull it out and everything will still be intact the other option of course is to run these wires across here and have them pop out here and again you could either drill it out here or just leave it hanging here so those are probably your best locations for switches that you want easily accessible this is how you wire your relay 30 is your output to your fog lights so that's going to have your hot for the fog lights this is the trigger this is wired to the switch on my dashboard it'll send a ground here and I believe that's 85 it can be 86 it really doesn't matter 85 or 86 can be your hot or ground as long as the other one is the opposite so each side here so you see these two are jumpered this is going to be my hot I'm going to use accessory power because I don't want the fog lights to be on when the car is off and not running thus draining the battery so it, it, I'm going to use accessory power you can use battery power just know that you'll always have to switch your lights off or you'll be draining battery so those two are jumpered like I said that will go to accessory power and basically when you flip the switch on the dash which is the gray it'll ground that that'll trigger the relay which will switch you see the center post is unused normally the center is connected to here so nothing is going here now when you flip the switch on the dash it's going to send accessory power from this post over to here down that wire and turn on your fog lights and I'll demonstrate that as soon as I tap this one into the accessory power got my accessory there on the pink you should be able to hear the relay click and you see with the relay clicked we have fog lights and then even though I heat shrunk all the hot connections I went ahead and taped that off just as one extra layer of protection we will tuck that back up into there put all the trim pieces on and call this done Appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and please tell your friends about my channel. Thank you very much.